Okay, so... Getting around the city these days, <laughs> it can be a real pain. It really can. With the traffic and trying to park, and like then that. you've got, you know, yeah. all the emissions from cars. Mm -hmm. Makes you wonder if there's a better way. Right. Or Today, we're diving into this company, Carbike. Okay. They're a French startup. And they're trying to completely, like, reimagine urban transport. Basically, by blending electric bike and microcar technology. What I find interesting about them is, I mean, we talk about a lot of companies that are, mm. you know, they want to completely replace cars, right? Right. This is interesting. They're not trying to replace cars. They're addressing a very specific need in the market. That space between bikes and cars. I like that. So you get the agility of an e-bike, mm. but you get that added stability and protection of a car. Yeah. They're not afraid to try something new, which I really appreciate. And when I was looking at the articles and videos about them. They have some really cool features. Yeah. They've got four wheels, so you get that stability. Mm -hmm. Two seats for those times you need to carpool. And because weather happens. They've got headlights, a windshield, and even a full body. Right. To protect you from the elements. It's like they took everything we love about e-bikes and just gave it an upgrade. Totally. Yeah. And that hybrid approach, I think, is really what makes them stand out. Because you still get the pedal power, right. but it's assisted by a 250-watt electric motor. Which is pretty significant. That's a lot for an e-bike. Yeah, that's on the higher end for sure. Yeah. But then you add in those safety features. Yeah. Like okay. lockable doors and an alarm system. I think that's really what sets it apart. It's funny you should mention that. Okay. Because I've definitely had those moments on an e-bike right. where I almost wiped out. Like I hit some gravel or something. Oh, wait. We're trying to lock it up and it's just not secure. Yeah. This seems so much more practical. Yeah. And get this. They even have like a retractable roof and windows. Oh, really? So if it's a nice day, you can put the dock down. Feel the wind in your hair. I like it. <laughs> it's like a convertible. That's a good point you bring up about the safety, though. Mm -hmm. Because one of the articles I read. It said that 75% of cycling accidents. Wow. Occur because of a loss of balance. Yeah. So when you add those two extra wheels and a more robust chassis, I mean, yeah. I think Carbite could be a real game changer. Totally. Okay. So it's safe. It's eco-friendly. But how does it actually perform? I, can it handle like hills and rush hour traffic? From the videos I've seen, this thing looks like it can move. It's got a top speed of 25 kph, oh, which yeah. is pretty standard, but it's the range. That's impressive. And what are they doing to get that kind of range? Well, they've got regenerative braking. Okay, hold on. For those of us who aren't car people. What is regenerative braking? It's really cool, actually. So basically, when you hit the brakes... Instead of that energy being lost as heat... It captures it. Okay. And uses it to recharge the battery. So you're getting more mileage. Exactly. Yeah. Especially in the city where you're stopping and starting all the time. Makes sense. Yeah. And Carbike says that if you use this right... It can really extend the range. Significantly. Wow. Yeah. And then on top of all that, they're thinking about adding solar panels as an option. Really? I mean, how cool is that? That would be incredible. Just driving around, soaking up the sun. And powering your ride. You talk about sustainability. I know, right? Yeah. It's like they thought of everything. And they're not stopping there. They have all these different models planned. Like what? Well, they're working on a single seater. For deliveries? Oh, that's smart. I know. And then a family-friendly version. They can fit two kids. Wow. They really are trying to appeal to everyone. Yeah. That's a good strategy. There's always a but, right? Use your this is day. still just a prototype. Ah. They're looking for funding to actually start mass production. Of course. That's the hardest part. Isn't it always? Yeah. Will they get the investment they need? That's the big question. What do you think it'll take? I mean, is it just about the numbers? Or is it about selling this whole vision? I think it's both. You need a solid business plan. Of course. But you also need a good story. Something that resonates with investors. Something that gets them excited. Exactly. It's like they're not just building a car. They're building a movement. Yeah, they are. And that's yeah. what's so fascinating about this company. It's not just about the tech. It's about the potential. Speaking of potential. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Like. How much space does this thing actually have? What about the battery life? We've got all those details and more coming up. After a quick break. <laughs> so you want to get down to like the nuts and bolts yeah. of what makes this thing tick? Hit me with the details. Like how much space are we talking about? One of the articles mentioned that it's 800 millimeters wide. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. barely wider than a motorcycle. I think that's what's so cool about it. It's small. But it's still comfortable. Okay. 
You know, you're not sacrificing comfort for size. And some models even have two seats. So where are they putting everything? They're like, what about cargo space? Well, it's interesting you should mention that. It actually has a pretty sizable trunk. Really? Yeah, 400 liters. 400 liters. That's like, yeah. that's bigger than some small cars. That's wild. Yeah, you could fit a lot in there. I did not picture that. Okay, let's talk about the battery though. Okay. Because that's that's the heart of any electric vehicle. Absolutely. And I saw that it has a 750 all year battery. Is that? That's pretty impressive. Yeah. I mean, most e-bikes are somewhere between like 250 and 500. So this is significantly sig more. Significantly more. Okay. So that's for someone like me who's thinking about ditching their car. That's huge. I think so. But range is always the question. It is. What about hills? Oh. Remember that regenerative braking system we talked about? Oh, yeah. That's going to come in handy here. Because when you're going downhill... That energy is captured. Okay. And put back into the battery. So you're getting free mileage, essentially. Oh, pretty much. And on top of that... I remember reading something about solar panels. Yeah. They're toying with the idea... Of integrating solar panels. So you'd be driving around... And charging your car at the same time. Exactly. That's the dream. That's the future. Okay. There's got to be a downside. There's always a downside. I mean, it sounds too good to be true. What is it? Well... Have you ever heard the expression, you get what you pay for? Uh... Um, I mean, they haven't released official pricing yet. But this kind of technology... Yeah. It's not going to be cheap. That makes sense. And then what about long-term costs? What do you mean? Like maintenance, That's right. insurance, yeah. Yeah. all that stuff. That's a good question. Because is it a bike? Is it a car? I don't know. Nobody knows. And I'm sure the insurance companies, they're going to have a field day with this. Oh, absolutely. Figuring out how to classify it. It's like they're yeah. inventing a whole new category. Right. Which is cool. But also like... A little bit daunting. Yeah, it's uncharted territory. And speaking of uncharted territory... What about the infrastructure? What do you mean? Like, where does this thing fit in? On the roads. That is a good question. Is it going to be sharing the road with cars? Or is it going to be relegated to bike lanes? No. A lot of them aren't really designed for something this size. And that brings up safety concerns as well. It does. Because yes, it has those extra safety features. But it's still going to be sharing the road with vehicles. That are much larger and heavier. It's a lot to think about. It is. And it seems like... There are still a lot of unanswered questions. There are. But that's kind of what makes this so interesting, right? Exactly. Yeah. This is the kind of conversation... That we need to be having. We have to rethink urban transportation. We do. And this is a step in the right direction. It is. Okay, so... We've talked about the good. And we've talked about the maybe not so good. But now I want to dive into... Some of the potential drawbacks. Or limitations of this car bike concept. Let's do it. Okay, so we've talked about some potential drawbacks like cost and infrastructure. Right. But what about... I don't know. Like the practicality of it all. Like what happens when it rains? Oh, or snows? That's a good point. I mean... They've got the roof and the windshield. But those videos we saw... It was always sunny and beautiful. Yeah. No. Real life is not always like that. Exactly. Yeah. What about like visibility oh you mean because if you're a driver and you're used to looking out for cars and bikes right is this thing going to catch you off guard yeah it's it's new so it'll take some getting used to for everyone yeah for sure i mean imagine you're trying to make a left turn yeah and all of a sudden there's this thing this car bike right next to you and then like the bike lanes because even if it's allowed will it even fit that's a good question because a lot of bike lanes... They're not that wide. No, they're not. And this thing... It's wider than a bike. It is. So are you going to be stuck driving in the road? And if you are... That brings us back to those safety concerns. And what about repairs? Oh, that's another thing. This is like... A pretty complex piece of machinery. It is a hybrid. Are you going to need a specialist to fix it? All right. I mean... <laughs> Good luck finding parts. I know. And then that gets us back to the cost. We talked about the upfront cost. Right. Yeah, what yeah. about... Uh, like, the long-term cost of ownership. That's something a lot of people don't consider. Right. What about insurance? I mean... What are they going to categorize this as? Is it a bike? Is it a car? No one knows. Who knows? It's kind of exciting. It is. Yeah. But also like... It's a little bit overwhelming. Yeah. It's like they're trying to fit a square peg. Into a round hole. I like that. But maybe that's what it takes. To shake things up. Maybe we need to rethink everything. Exactly. Challenge our assumption. And come up with something new. 
Because this is a conversation that we need to be having. A hundred percent. So I want to thank you for coming on the show today. Well, thank you for having me. This was a really interesting deep dive. It was fun. And our listeners will continue this conversation. I hope so too. It's maybe the future of transportation. What a great thought. For everyone. Thanks for listening.